you get bonus armor, you get bonus armor, and you get bonus armor. Banditos, today I've got something truly epic for you. Picture this, your squad, not just the creme de la creme of DPS in the Division 2, but becoming indestructible powerhouses with a staggering 3 million in armor. That's right, get hyped, because we're diving into a legendary DPS tank support build that's gonna blow your mind. Say goodbye to boring pistol bulwark tank builds because this one is the ultimate wingman in a league of its own. This powerhouse fights alongside the best of DPS builds to elevate the team's aggressiveness, creating an unbeatable force that will leave the white tusks shaking in their virtual boots. Your squad is gonna love it. Hit like if unique and effective builds are for you and comment, hold my beer to support the channel. <laughs> Now you might be wondering why you should care about this legendary DPS tank support build. Well, let me tell you, Banditos, this build is a game changer. With its ability to turn everyone in your group into an armored tank, boasting a staggering 3 million in armor, you'll be virtually indestructible on the battlefield. Imagine the power and confidence of fighting alongside your fellow DPS builds while maintaining the durability and resilience of a tank. And this build not only provides exceptional crowd control with its shocking abilities, but it also ensures that you'll always be a force to be reckoned with. So if you're ready to dominate, every encounter and leave your enemies in awe, then this build is an absolute must have in your arsenal. Here's the build and it's perfectly tailored for legendary. Starring the all new exotic assault rifle called the St. Elmo's engine delivered in year five season one. This beast comes with 20% critical hit damage, 20% weapon handling and 20% critical hit chance mods. Those are amazing. And we get an extra large mag of 70 rounds. I have assault rifle damage, health damage, damage to targets out of cover. And the talent says basically at 100 stacks, the next magazine will be filled with shock ammo. And we're playing into that. More on that in a second. The secondary weapon I am running is the lefty. You're going to want to run this one. Okay, so we got 20% reload speed. I got crit chance and more crit chance. Shock and damage, damage to armor, damage to targets out of cover, and perfect sledgehammer. So dealing damage with a grenade applies a mark on the target. Targets with mark will take 40% more damage to armor and have a 30% movement speed decrease. The mark will disappear after 10 seconds. Now, this is a special damage. Notice it says more damage to armor, but it's its own classification of damage. And all you have to do is have this shotgun in your hand when you throw that grenade and apply damage. You don't actually have to use the shotgun. So once you do that, you can switch to your other weapon. This is a very important detail and a way to buff your team's damage. And we're going to be doing that in a few ways here. Notice I'm running survivalist. So that's going to give us 10% protection from elites as well as 10% additional damage to status affected targets for our team. That's another way we're going to be buffing our team's damage, as well as we have these really amazing fire grenades. I suggest you use these at all the appropriate spawn doors. Now look at the build. It's running 2.1 million armor, basically the highest amount of armor you can have in this game, and it's not even peaked out all the way. But this is a DPS tank build, which means that I'm running maximum armor as well as maximum crit chance and crit damage on the build. And so that's the formula. Armor, crits. Let's start with the mask. The mask is our first piece of foundry. Two pieces is giving us 10% total armor, which we're running. I have armor and double crits on this mask. Our second piece of foundry is on the knees, and this has armor and more crit damage. For the gloves, I'm running Uzina Getica, which is 5% more total armor, and then armor and double crits. For the holster, I decided to go with the Picaros. That way, it can have some weapon damage as well as the armor core, and I'm running crit chance. You could also run an armored chest guy here or a grupo if you like or even a fenris hey banditos the community we have built together wouldn't have been possible without you so as a thank you for supporting my channel and the community i'm bringing you the hookup on member perks including even more division 2 content and the celebrated gaming music playlists if you're not part of texas players club click the join button below okay the chess piece is the point man and it's the gila guard giving us five percent more total armor should be actually easy to farm but you can buy this right now in the countdown vendor do it now so it comes with armor and it already had crit damage on it i rerolled crit chance and put a crit chance mod so perfect vanguard deploying the shield is making it invulnerable for five seconds very helpful and legendary and 
grants 50% of your armor as bonus armor to all allies for 20 seconds. And you only have a 25 second cooldown on that. So you can give 50% of your armor. Look at that. We're running 2.1 million. So that's over a million in bonus armor to your team every 25 seconds, guys. Every 25 seconds. I'm going to stress that because that's insane. Every 25 seconds. Oh, wait, we're not done. There's the backpack. So we're running the Lovosier electric backpack. It gives us status effects. Helpful for the shock. On this one, I have armor, headshot damage, and crit damage. I do wish I had a crit chance there, but we'll take it. Protection from elites mod there. Could also put crits if you don't want that, but just trying to make myself a little more tankier. And a perfect galvanize. So applying a blind and Sarah confuser shock to an enemy grants 50% of your armor as bonus armor. 50%, again, to you and all allies within 30 meters of that enemy for 10 seconds. So you're getting that bonus armor and so is the team. That's even better than the chest piece. That's, again, a million in bonus armor, right? 50% of 2.1. Now, when you add that to what the chest piece is giving for your team, your team is getting the full 100% of your armor value. So you are dishing out 2.1 million in bonus armor to your team every 10 to 25 seconds. And it is staggering. And for you, you're getting the 50% from Galvanize every 10 seconds. And so that puts you over 3.1 million in armor total. So you are also a staggering tank. Taking a quick look at the shield. So this is a tier six shield, fully powered up, 4.7 million in health. I got pretty basic mods here. Okay, nothing too special, but that's the Crusader shield. And then I decided to just run a fixer because we don't have any armor regen or any form of heals. And so we need to have something going if we don't want to always be using an armor kit. So I just have a basic fixer here going. And it seemed to do the job. I maybe used one armor kit throughout the whole legendary. I'm not sure exactly, but it's rare because we're pretty tanky and we're always getting that bonus armor. As far as crits go, we're at 58% crit chance, 123% crit damage, not too shabby, a little elevated headshot damage at 84%. So let's think about this for a second and discuss why this is such a good build, especially for legendary. Now, I gotta say, builds like this already exist to some degree in raids. So there are raid builds out there that dish out mega bonus armor to the team, but Galvanize isn't usually part of that equation. It's usually something like Protector and Vanguard or some something similar but this one's really good first of all when it comes to synergies with the weapon saint elmo's i decided to go with crits you could also put armor regen more armor regen or even repair skills or even more protection from elise if you wanted to but i was like you know this assault rifle is really good and if we're going to be using it a lot to get that shock out so that you and your team gets that bonus armor then we might as well be putting out some serious damage too now you're not going to be the dps leader on the team well you shouldn't be at least but you're going to be up there you're going to be a great control contributor to DPS. And I didn't feel weak at any time when it came to power. Yeah, I could tell I was putting out more shots than I would have if I was running like an all red striker build, but that's okay. Because the point is, is to take one for the team, right? And so we are diminishing our damage a little bit so that we can dish out all of that armor. All that armor that we're running on this build isn't really for ourselves, right? So we got 2.1 million in armor. That's not for me. It's not for you. That's for the team. That's an additional pool of armor for the team. And so we're dishing out that 2 million per person. There's three additional team members. So that's 6 million in bonus armor at least every 25 seconds. And so I've been saying for a long time, and the reason why I created the Wingman build series, because I have quite a few Wingman builds and I've been creating them for a while, is that, you know, from my perspective, healer builds, like a future initiative, all yellow healer build, you know, they're really overpowered. If you think about it, that build is strong enough to heal an eight man squad in the raid. <laughs> so that's how strong that healer build is. And so really you shouldn't need that many heals for a four man squad in a legendary mission. I wouldn't think. I mean, how long does it take to clear a checkpoint? Like two, three minutes, five minutes at the most. I mean, if you're having a tough time, you know what I mean? So you only need the heals to last two or three minutes. That's not very many heals, really. And things have changed a lot. We now have more options to be independent with our own healing. Like Hunter's Fury, there's the Memento and its regen and its bonus armor. There's Heartbreaker giving out mega bonus armor. There's all sorts of ways that people are getting more heals. Think about the Picaros and the Double Brazos with its skill tier. And so people are more independent with their heals and so you don't need all of these overpowered healer builds and, and what i've also noticed is how players react differently to healer builds than they do when they're running tons of bonus armor when they're feeling tanky they play more aggressive they spend more time out of cover dishing out that mega dps that they have when they're running heals they're more timid because their armor breaks and so they have to get back in cover wait to heal up even if it's only a couple of seconds and then they get back into the fight so it's just different because heals aren't fast enough usually to heal 
heal through the damage they're taking where with bonus armor they can sustain while they're putting out damage and maybe even go toe to toe with a chunga or an elite and finish him off before he breaks their armor and then we're just going to refresh their bonus armor anyways every 10 to 25 seconds they're back in the fight so anyways they, there's a lot more confidence in the team and with that means faster clears and legendary now let's discuss the crowd controlling elements because this build has it okay so the shock is dishing out the bonus armor to you which is at a million and to your team which is also at a million and so you want to use that as much as possible so make sure you're always loading up and stick to your primary weapon as much as you can but the shotgun is a big deal especially for spawns or chungas or large waves huck that grenade that fire grenade catch them all fire so they're going to stand still make sure you have that shotgun in hand the lefty and you're going to be giving your team 40 percent more damage that's crazy to armor which is again it's special kind of damage and then switch back and then shock them so they still can't run so they're basically useless and that's excellent Excellent crowd control and while that's happening your team is going to get even more 10 percent damage to status affected targets because they're on fire and shocked and by the time that perfect sledgehammer wears out those enemies are toast okay let's talk about the total armor that you're going to be putting on your teammates most players in this game agree that about 1.1 million in armor is their happy place on a dps build so like imagine an all striker build with basically two armor cores and then there's lots of players that go in there with no additional armor cores and that's because in legendary especially it doesn't really matter if you don't have any bonus armor or exceptional armor on kill or regen then an armor core is not really doing much for you to be honest in this game armor doesn't do much for you the enemy just takes it away in a single bullet so you might as well reappropriate that to more damage so you can kill faster but a lot of people run that 1.1 million armor just so that they can take an extra bullet or two before their armor breaks before they go all the way down and so i get that i get that they just want to be able to react to to the incoming damage better. Let's just say the average player is running around with a million in armor. You're dishing out two million in bonus armor to those players, right? And the reality is, is it's happening all the time. You'll notice that with this build, you're constantly dishing it out because Galvanize is happening every 10 seconds and the shield Vanguard is popping up the 50% every 25 seconds, constant overlap. You take that guy that's running around with about a million in armor on an all red striker build, let's just say for example, and you give him an additional 2 million in armor plus he is now running around with 3 million armor, but here's the kicker. He has sacrificed nothing for that armor, for that bonus armor. He still has the best dps he could possibly have on his build i mean imagine having all the dps of the strongest striker build in the game with three million in armor and when that armor goes away we're putting it right back on him when they take that bonus armor away we put in it right back on him in seconds and in my opinion that's way better than a healer because the healer is only going to bring him back to a million we're going to keep pushing him back to three million in armor we're going to keep him a tank with the damage of the best dps build in the game and when you have a couple of those guys on your team with the dps that you're also putting out as well as the damage buffs that you're giving to them wow is all i gotta say and then from there i suggest like throwing a skill build on the team as well somebody that can rotate their skills from like emp pulses to traps or to riot foe maybe even an eclipse build that would probably be the best squad two dps one tank dps and an eclipse skill build will mow through content and that's because you want the eclipse to be able to disable tanks and warhounds quickly so your team can move on and focus on the npcs also just by holding people still with rifle is always very helpful makes that dps nice and clean banditos if you haven't seen this video you need to check it out i put out a new strategy to defeat the floor 100 hunters with all directives on legendary in the summit and i'm giving you five best solo builds to do so Follow me.